Psalm 11 verse 3. I want you to pray three prayers before you sit down. And I want you to pray it violently, seriously. Psalm 11 verse 3. The Bible says, If the foundation be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? I want you to tackle your foundation. I mean, can we have it there? If the foundation be destroyed, can you give me verse 2 before 3? I want to show you something there. Verse 2, for lo, can't you see? Let's everybody read it together. One to go. For lo, the wicked bend their, their bones. bones. They, they make, make ready, ready their arrows upon the strings, strings that, that they, they may privately shoot at the upright in heart. I join my faith with 20 people here. In the name of Jesus. Every satanic arrow. In the name against your health hey. if your amen can be louder backfire amen the name of Jesus lift up your voice and father Arrow of sickness, every arrow of sickness and diseases, and diseases targeted against targeted me against and me. my children. And my children back to send open your mouth and every fire the prayer of sickness. Lepa la ga da ga pa la ga da ga ya ga da lepa pa da zikete. Rekete kapali ya da da. Every arrow from the pit of hell targeted to destroy my health. Targeted to destroy my children in jesus name we pray Amen. if you are very well i will very wise i will advise you to pray that prayer let me tell you something where we have read in that scripture the bible says i'm still coming there but i want to say this to encourage you to pray the Bible says that the king of Syria is sent a host of army to come and arrest a man of God. But before they came, the man of God has already seen them. You don't know what the enemy is planning ahead of you. Kalabo Shakata. That is why I want you to pray. You have no idea if God can open your eyes to see their strategies of caging and destroying and limiting your glory. You will pray. I want you to pray and say, Father, every arrow from the pit of hell to cripple my destiny, to cripple my family. I am not your candidate. Back to sender. Open your mouth and fire the prayer. My life, my family is not your candidate. Every arrow of sickness and diseases. I pray for every robot family. Every plans of the wicked. I come against them. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. God bless those who are praying. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. He said, if the foundation be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? That was what we pay up this morning. I want you to pray for your foundation. When somebody has diabetes, they, and they take him to the doctor, the doctor will say, the first thing the doctor will do is to diagnose and say, oh, do you have any family history? Am I communicating? Yes, sir. And they begin to trace it. If they discover that in your family there is something like diabetes, they know how to treat it. They, now, they, they, they won't cure it. They will only manage it because they've discovered that it's in the blood, it's in the genes. But if they diagnose you and they ask you, has there been any diabetes in your family? And, they, and you said, no, they will find a way to cure it. So there is difference between curing and managing. Now, I said that to tell you that even doctors, they recognize what we call foundation. So if there is a traces of something that is not good in your life, and you can trace this to your father, to your mother, to your lineage, this is your time. Amen. God is about to deal with them. Amen. I say God is about to deal with them. Amen. When God was speaking concerning Moses, God said concerning Moses, he was the meekest man, very loyal, very humble, and he was a man that walked with God. But what, what something was wrong with, our, with his foundation. His foundation was the, from the lineage of the Levite. And when you look
look at the story of the Levite, Levite and Simeon, in the book of Genesis, the Bible says that they had a daughter called Dinah, and this Dinah, another country, another city, they came to violate, to mess up their daughter called Dinah. And two of them, Simeon and Levi, they went after this city and they destroyed all the men in that city. And in Genesis chapter 49, there was a curse that was placed on Simon and Levi that by the reason of their anger, their anger was caught. It was from that generation, from that foundation that Moses erupted. When it got to a time, when that foundation was about to catch up with Moses, the Lord spoke to Moses, says Moses, speak to the rock, but the foundation catch up with him, and he spoke in anger, and he couldn't enter the, can I pray for someone here? Your foundation will not catch up with you. Amen! What kill your father will not kill you. Amen. What stop your mother will not stop Amen. you. Lift up your voice. Say, my father, my father. My father, my father. I give you permission. I give you permission. Enter my family. Enter my family. Enter my foundation. Enter my whatever foundation. you have not planted. Hey, whatever you have not planted. Today, today. Or put there. Oh, oh, Open oh, your oh, mouth oh, and oh, fire oh, the prayer. Whatever you have not planted in my foundation. That may want to stop my destiny. Whatever you have not planted in my foundation that is waiting to catch up with me by your mercy today, uproot them. Aha! Shagalagalagalagalagalagalagalagalagalagalagalagalagalagalagalagalagalagalagalagalagalagalagalagalagalagalagalagalagalagalagalagalagalagalagalagalagalagalagalagalagalagalagalagalagalagalagalagalagal
shakata la prabaga zikete iko palianda galimbro moku shakata it is written the axe is laid at the tree and every plant my father does not plant shall be uprooted whatever my god the creator of heaven and her the creator of your soul has not planted in your body in your body because your body is the temple of the living god yes. oh, i kick here right now yes. that body receive healing every troublers of your head die every troublers of your body die every troublers of your sister die every strangers in your body because it is written it is written as soon as they hear my voice they shall obey for the strangers shall fade away and be afraid out of their clothes every strangers in your body every foreign things in your body i uproot them by fire 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 From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Be healed. Amen. Now. Amen. Be healed. Amen. Now. Amen. Be healed. Amen. Now. Amen. Be healed. Amen. I'm healed. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Say to yourself, I'm healed. I'm healed. Thank you. Lord. Say it once again. I'm I am healed. I'm healed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. If you are here, shout a big hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say no. this after me. I declare in the name of I Jesus. I declare in the name of Jesus. This is my week. This is my week. My mind is renewed. My mind is renewed. By the word of the Lord. By the word of the I Lord. I shall love the Lord. I will love the Lord. And my life is transformed. And my life is transformed. My career is transformed. My career is transformed. My marriage is transformed. My marriage is transformed. My business is transformed. My business is transformed. By the renewing of my, my mind. By the renewal of my mind. I shall swore as wing like eagle I will swear like wings like the eagle I shall reign and rule over my enemies I shall reign and rule over my enemies I am a victor and not a victim I am a victor and not a victim I am a champion I cannot be defeated I am a champion I cannot my be defeated. heart is receptive to God's word my heart is receptive towards God's word the word, word of God shall dwell in me richly the word of God shall dwell richly in me I shall excel uh, among my contemporaries. Hey, I shall excel among my Say it louder. I shall excel among my contemporaries. I shall excel among my contemporaries. I am what God says I am. I am what God says I, I am. I am the head and not the tail. I am the head and not the I tail. I will lend to nations I will never borrow. I will lend to nations I will not borrow. Uh -huh. Open your eyes, look at me. Uh -huh. When somebody comes to curse you, you know how you react. Uh, how do you react? If somebody say, I don't want to say it. There is something that reacts violently in you right now. Am I communicating? That send it back to the owner. In the same way, I want you to react to God's word violently and say it boldly. I am what God says I am. I am what God says I am. I shall live perpetually in good health. I shall live perpetually in good health. Sickness and diseases is not my portion. Sickness and diseases is not my portion. My marriage is blessed. My marriage is blessed. My husband is blessed. My husband is blessed. My wife is blessed. Wives are blessed. My children are blessed. My children are blessed. My career is blessed. My career is my blessed. My business is blessed. My business my is blessed. My ministry is blessed. My ministry. This is my appointed time. This is my appointed time. I shall dominate. I shall dominate. I shall rule. I shall rule. I shall glow. I shall glow. I'm blessed and highly favored. I'm blessed and I'm highly favored. I choose to be joyful. I choose to be joyful. I choose never to be sad. Ah, I choose never to be sad. No more sorrow in my life. No more sorrow in my life. No more setback in my life. No more setback in my life. No more slow progress. No more slow progress. No more shame in my no life. No more shame. I in shall my leap life. over the wall. I shall leap over the wall. I am a winner. I'm not a loser. I am a winner. I'm not hey, a loser. Hey, hey. I will end well. Month, this month, I will serve the Lord. I will serve the Lord with all my might. With all my might.
might, with all my strength, with all my strength, with all my heart, with all my heart, I will be committed. I will be committed. I will be devoted. I will be devoted. And I will please the Lord. And I will please the Lord. The Lord shall be the light of me. The Lord shall be the light said of me. And I will be highly favored. And I will be highly favored. It is well with me. It is well with it me. It is well with my tomorrow. It is well with my tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Say to the amen with fire. Amen. 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 Fire. Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. You can please have your seat. God I bless. Receive it. You are all welcome in the mighty name of Jesus. Tell your neighbor, today is my day. Tell another person, today is my day. Amen. Right. We've been looking at transformation since last week spiritual transformation go with me to the book of Acts chapter 9 verses 1 to 6 Osha please I would like everybody to be attentive no more movement sit quietly and hear God's word God is going to speak to someone here today in the name of Jesus Christ Acts chapter 9 verses 1 to 8 act chapter 9 verses 1 to 8 thank you father and so yet breathing out threatening and slaughtered against the disciples of the lord went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to damascus to the synagogue that if he found any of this way whether they were men or women he might bring them bound unto jerusalem and as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined around about him a light from heaven, and he fell to the earth, and heard the voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecuted. It is hard for thee to kick against the brick. And he, trembling and astonished, said, what would thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go unto the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, and hearing a voice, but saying, No man. Verse 8, every one of us together. And, and his eyes were open, and he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. Wait a minute. The Bible says, and his eyes were open. Am I right? And his eyes were open. He saw no man. Is that not a contradiction? How can your eyes be open? And here you cannot see any man. <laughs> his eyes were open. And yet he could not see any man. Now, today we are looking at divine transformation part two. You know, I started last week by sharing with us what transformation is all about. Basically, don't let us go too much. Uh, let's just make it simple and easy for every one of us. Transformation simply means change. Let somebody say change. Physically, spiritually, materially, financially, academically, ministerially, health-wise. Change. And I'm trusting God that someone will encounter change today. And I said to us, there is positive transformation and there is a negative transformation. And we look at what are the catalysts that can provoke genuine spiritual transformation in our life. And we say, well, number one thing is an encounter with Jesus. And we saw our Paul, who used to be called Saul, encounter Jesus on his way to Damascus he was a man that was full of power or full of influence he was a man that was ready like we learned today in our Sunday school he was an antichrist he was
was someone that opposes Christ. Anything Christ, he doesn't want to hear. So he was doing very well and everyone in the city, in the nation, applaud him for killing and destroying Christians. I told you he was the architect of one of those who supervised the killing of Dickens Stephen. So he was also on this main assignment, on this vision of killing Christians when suddenly there was a change a change that he was not prepared for a change that he wasn't expecting there is someone listening to me today a sudden change will happen to you so by the reason of this encounter there was a 180 degree transformation in his life and i also say that another thing that trigger transformation is a heart surgery until our heart is laid at the altar of God changing our heart transformation may not be in view I will say that the heart of man is desperately wicked who can knows it out of the heart proceeded evil thought and the Bible says that this heart need a surgery Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 26 he said and I will give you a new heart a heart of stones I will remove and I will give you a new heart. I'm trusting God and I believe that some of us has experienced a change of heart. A heart that forgives easily. A heart that surrender to God. A heart that love God. Now I will continue from there. Now as Paul being our case study was on his way. He was on his way going to destroy the Christians and suddenly the Lord, an invisible hand hit him and he fell down and that moment God was operating in his life and one of the things I saw that I'm going to be sharing with us is 10 things that change in the life of Paul 10 things that changed that was transformed in the life of Paul, we want to learn from this. And I'm trusting God that these things too will change. I hope you are listening to me. Ayo, uh, can you relocate from there? Um, uh, what's going Ejiro, come to this place. Take your Bible, listen to God's word. Amen. Now, the Bible says that verse 8, as he was going, he fell and something happens to him. His eyes were open, but he could not see. His eyes were boldly open, but he could not see. One, another major things that trigger transformation is the surgery of our vision. Let somebody say the surgery of our vision. The surgery of our eyes. Our eyes need spiritual surgery for transformation to take place. Write it down. Replacement is needed. So vision was replaced. When you look at the Bible it says he was seeing his eyes were open but he could not see anything. As soon as he rose up his eyes were open but he saw no man. So what happens there was the fact that uh, his spiritual eyes was dealt with. God had to work on his spiritual sight. That the kind of vision you are pursuing is not the vision I had for you from the beginning of the world. I need to perform a surgery. And so, <laughs> when he rose up he couldn't see any man again why? it was a divine encounter at that point in time God was operating in his eyes his spiritual eyes was so porous that all his vision was to kill Christian but the moment he rose up from that surgery he received a new sight he received what? a new sight a spiritual sight Brethren, you need to see. And it's very important. The lamp of the body is the eyes. If therefore your eyes is good, your whole body will be full of light. 
Someone need a spiritual surgery of his eyes today. I'm trusting God that God will give you a brand new eyes. Oh, when we are talking about eyes, we are talking about vision. When, now, now, even physically, when you lose your sight, it hinders you from making progress in life. Am I, am I communicating here? Yeah. When a man called Saul, nobody was, nobody was telling him. He was going on his own because he has two eyes, right? But when he had that encounter, the Bible says somebody has to do what? He could not see again. <laughs> so when you lose your spiritual sight, you become vulnerable. When you lose your spiritual sight, it is people that will begin to lead you when God's supposed to be leading you. When you lose your spiritual sight, you become vulnerable in the hands of the wicked one. Oh, you don't get what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm praying for someone here yeah, that your spiritual eyes shall be open. You need to see. You need to see, brethren, into the camp of your enemy in order to abort their plan before they execute it. You need to see. You need to see. Where my mommy read, Kalabo Shakataya, the enemy king of Syria they were already planning out they are going to arrest the man called Elijah but before they came he has already seen he has already knew I'm praying for someone here before the enemy execute their plan God will expose them Amen. Oh, you need your eyes to see he saw in the spirit realm he was lit he was he was dining and whining with the other he said listen to me somebody is coming a king has sent a messenger to come and arrest me. Tell him, tell them when they come, lock and arrest him. Today, God will arrest the arrester. Amen. Before they execute it, God will expose them. But your spiritual eyes need to be open. Why? You need to see, my brethren, so that you can know the plan of God for your life. You need to see so that you can know God's plan for your life. If you don't know that, there was a man called Gehazi. We read it, right? When he saw the army coming, when he saw a lot of shadow coming, he was afraid. He was was rejected because he could not see her. He thought his life is gone. And that is what is happening to many people. Because you can't see God's plan for your life. You become fearful. You are afraid. You are junks in one spot. You couldn't take decision because you can't see. But I'm trusting God for someone here. My God we open your eyes. I said my God we open your eyes. I said my God we open your eyes. Listen to me. Listen to me. Gehazi was already I want to add this to my story. He was already wee wee when he saw the host of Sharo everywhere. He said, My star, alas, give it to me. Hey, Second Kings chapter 6, verse 16, verse 14, 16 and 17. Give it to me. He was afraid. He didn't know what to do. He said, Oh, my father, my father, we are done for. What shall we do? And Elijah said, all this why are you afraid oh if only you can see that those who are with us verse 16 <laughs> and he answered the fear not for they that be with us are more than they that be with them the reason why you are afraid is because you can't see you do not know how protected how secure you are you are in ignorance of the fact that uh, those who are with you uh, are more than those who are with them. Uh, that is why you are jumping from one place to the other looking for solution where there is no solution because you have not seen. Today, God will open your eyes. Amen. So when you see me operating, it's because my hands have seen. He said, I will show you what no man has seen. What eyes have not seen what years have not had what has not come to the mind of man that is what i have prepared for those who love him for those of you who love god greater things is coming your way Amen. i say mighty things are coming your way i say mighty things are coming your way baba you need to see you need to see brethren you need to see why must you see you need to see so that you can abort the plan of the enemy before they execute it. 
You need to see so that you can be aware of the enemy's plan and plan yourself against them. Look at what the Bible says in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 32. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 32. He said, But Elisha sat in his house, and the elders sat with him, and the king sent a man from before him. But here the messenger came to him. He said to the elder, See how the son of the murderer has sent to take away my head. Look when the messenger come, shut the door and hold him fast at the door. It's not the sound of his master feet behind him. I'm praying for someone here. My God, we give you spiritual eyes. The secret of your enemy shall be exposed. Amen. The secret of your enemy shall be exposed. Amen. You need to see so that you will know who is on your side or who is against you. It's not everybody that is around you is with you. Oh, God opened the eyes of Jesus. Jesus said to Judah, Judah, what you are doing, do it quickly. Because I'm already not aware. I'm already aware of your tricks. I'm already aware of your plans. I'm not caught unaware. Lack of spiritual eyes has made many people to be caught unaware because they could not see. I'm praying for you today that Lord will open your eyes. Amen. You need to also see to see how you are. Who are you? You need to see from the spiritual eyes of who you are. This Israelite could not see who they are in Christ. When Jesus asked, when God asked them, go and possess the land, go and spy the land. In the book of Numbers, chapter 13, give it to me. Numbers, chapter 13, verse 32. Look at the way they see themselves. Numbers, chapter 13, verse 32. And they brought this evil report of the land which they are searched unto the children of Israel say the land through which we have gone to search is a land that eateth up the inhabitant thereof and all the people that we saw in need they are men of great status verse 33 but as far as we are concerned and there we saw the giant the son of Anakin which come of the giant and we were in our own sight come on now we were in our own sight as grasshopper. And so we were in their sight. How do you see yourself? You need to see. God needs to open your eyes to see yourself the way God sees you. Many see themselves as nothing, nothing good can ever happen. Many see themselves as a failure. I mean, the way the world view you, you carry that same view and you begin to use it to view your life. It is not true. Your spiritual eyes needs to be open so that you can see the way God sees you. Am I talking to someone here today? God called Abraham. Abraham thought he was uh, an, he, he was a failure because he mixed himself. He carried a man called a lot. His cousin along. And all through the time Lot was with him, there was a limitation to where he could go. There was a limitation to what he could achieve. And when suddenly he spiritual eyes was open he said to lord let there be no fighting you go this way i go that way so that we can be brothers give it to me genesis chapter 14 genesis chapter 13 verse 14 and the bible says at that time when there was a separate there's somebody here today you need to separate so that your eyes can be open and the lord said unto abraham after Lord was separated from him, the Lord said to him, God will speak to someone here. He said, lift up now what the eyes. Abraham has been in that same place, but he could not see. He was limited by those who put around him. I'm praying for someone here. There will be divine separation. Amen. There are people that need to live your life. There are people that need you need to be separated from. You are carrying them. You are putting them into your life. They are the architect of your stagnation. Today, God will separate you. Amen. I said today, my God will separate you. Amen. He said, lift up your eyes now. Is his eyes blind? He said, look from the place where thou art. 
God is speaking to someone here. He said, look from the place where you are. Northward, southward, eastward, westward. Give it to me, verse 15. He said, as far for all this land which thou seest, thee I'm giving it to thee, and to thy seed forever. Verse 16. And he said, and I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall the seed also be numbered as far as your eyes can see. I'm giving it to you. How far you can see yourself in this country? How far you can see yourself in this world? I see somebody here. You are becoming greater than anyone here. Yeah. See somebody. But you need to I see for it. yourself. I can, can somebody pray this prayer and say, Father, Father. Open, my heart. open my eyes. Open my heart. Open my eyes. Open my heart. And he said, I can see an ammo tree. He said, wow, verily, you have seen very well. For I will esteem my word to perform it. Joel chapter 2 verse 28. He said, in the last day, I will pour out my spirit upon offer. And your sons and your daughter shall prophesy. Your young men shall see vision. The Bible says, my people perish for lack of you need to see to have a new vision. You need to see to do what? To have a new vision. The vision Saul was going about doing, we end up in futility. And on his way to Damascus, God gave him a new surgery of his eyes and suddenly his eyes was open after rising from that encounter he wasn't pursuing against god anymore he was pursuing jesus a man that's supposed to be killing people suddenly now he began to save so because his eyes has been open pray to yourself say father, father open my eyes open my eyes that i may see your plan for my that life i may see your plan open for my life open my eyes open my that eyes, i may lord. see your plan for that my life i may see your plan for my life lord you need to know God's plan for your life. What you are doing is you what God commanded you to do. You need to know. Your eyes need to be open. Oh, you remember her guy. Her guy was there. She was lamenting. She was crying because there was no water to feed her baby. But right where she was, there was water, but she couldn't see. There are opportunities around you. There are visions, new no visions. God has propelled and programmed for your destiny. But your spiritual eyes need to see, to embrace it. Many are running away from God. It's because your spiritual eyes is blind. If only your eyes can be open, you will know that you need to pursue this goal with all strength, with all power. Because that is realizing your fulfillment. Your eyes needs to be open. Your eyes needs to be open. Your eyes needs to be open. To be so aggressive. My brother, it was the eyes of Paul that got open. That was why it could not be stopped anymore. Say, now I see. Look at what you said in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 16, 17, and 18. Give it to me. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 16, 17, and 18. When his eyes were open, he was praying for us too. That our eyes will be open. <laughs> he was praying for us too. He says, cease not to give thanks to God. God bless you. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may unto you, give unto you the spirit of wisdom, revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened 
unto your heart. Now, what, what do we say? The heights of your understanding. Are you with me at all? You have been doing something in a wrong way, in a wrong way, in a wrong way, in a wrong way. And somewhat, suddenly, somebody just walk up to you and say, okay, why not do it like this? And at the moment you do that, say, oh, I see. Oh. The highs of his understanding. Hop. Then you, can, you, you are now able to see in a better way. I pray for you one person here. You will never go into hell again. Your eyes of understanding be open. Your eyes of understanding be open. Your eyes of understanding be open. Those who fight God is because their eyes of understanding is darkened. Those who play church is because their eyes of understanding is darkened. Saul, so, before he became poor, it's because his eyes was blinded. But the moment there was a spiritual surgery, he knew that this is what I'm called for. Galatians chapter 1 verse 13. He said, before my mother conceived me, God has already ordained me to be his mouthpiece. After today, I see transformation. Your attitude towards the things of God will change. Amen. Your mindset towards the things of God will change. Your vision for God will change. Because your eyes of understanding is open. What are those 10 things that happens to Saul? Number one. Number one, his passion and desire changed. The moment the eyes of his understanding was opened and the Lord performed his surgery, his passion and desire changed. His former passion was to destroy Christian and that completely changed to winning soul. Let your passion change from today. Many have passion for worldly things. They have passion for parties, for game, for gossiping, for slandering, for convincing people to go to hell. May I tell you, when you encounter Jesus and your eyes of understanding change, your passion changes. Oh, you don't get me. Your passion, your drives suddenly change. And let that change. And the moment, the moment that change happens, the moment Saul encountered Jesus, immediately, verse 20, he began to preach Christ. Because his passion changed. Number two, his vision changed. I said that his vision, his former vision is to kill Christians. He was an antichrist, but the moment his eyes was open, he now see visions to save the world especially unbelievers that was what happened now is god is giving you a new vision a vision to pursue god with all your zeal with all your passion with all your heart is coming upon you today in jesus name number three what happened what changes in his life of soul his status change he was called the chief sinner and in the scripture the bible call him now a chief the the, the the most outstanding apostles maybe <laughs> maybe you are there today you have a status with the world god is changing your status today number four his association change from being a pharisee to being a disciple of christ a followers of Christ. The Bible says that evil communication corrupt good manner. He that walketh with the wise shall be wise. The companion of fool shall be destroyed. His company, his association. You know, <laughs> you know, he was trying to relate with the disciples, but you know, it took the disciples sometimes to embrace him. Am I communicating? because they say we know your association you don't belong here and so everybody was running away from him he took Barnabas to say I knew this guy is genuine he has relocated come on now I see someone's status someone's association changing you see when transformation happened you don't retain former friends you don't refrain you don't retain them there is a shift 
Am I communicating here? There is a shift. You say you are born again, you still keep old friends. You still keep them. You know, they are my youth, you know. No, I can't, I can't, you know. No, transformation has not taken place. When transformation takes place, your association change. There is no longer association of old boys' school, uh, club, or what do they call it? Uh, it's a different club. You are now in the club of Christ. <laughs> and when, ah, we don't see you again. I say, ah, my status has changed. You. <laughs> I'm so glad I belong to Jesus. I, I belong, belong to, to Jesus. Jesus. I, I belong to my God. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm, I'm so, so glad, glad I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I belong to my God. Number five. What happens to Saul? <laughs> Who can tell me number one? Number two? Number three? Number four? Number five is language. Change. What comes out of his mouth? Change. <laughs> You know, his language used to be kill him, destroy them. They are useless set of people. Burn them to you know, when they were stoning Stephen, he was the one that keep stoning him. He must die. He must die. He must die. That was his language. But when his eyes was open and transformation took place, his language changed. His utterance changed. Brethren, one of the evidence that transformation has taken place in your life is that your worldly language changes. You don't speak the way the world speaks anymore. You don't speak the way the world speaks anymore. Your language changes. You now have the language of Christ. You now have the passion for souls to be saved. Number six is location change. He relocated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. I see God relocating you today. I just want one person to say amen. God is relocating you from a poor person to a rich person. From nobody to somebody. In the name of Jesus. Look at me. Look at me. When he used to be in the world, we are talking about Paul. And I'm seeing that same change is happening to you today. His influence was limited. Am I communicating here? When Paul was with the world, his influence was limited to only Judaism, Pharisee, and Sadducee. But when transformation took place, Paul was not all over the world. After today, limitation ends in your life. Say, Lord, transformed me. Transform me in the name of Jesus. Number six. Am I right or seven? His appearance change. How he look. Are you with me? Teenager, listen to me. Men, women, listen to me. Transformation is not by mouth. You see, I'm, I'm coming. If time permit me, what, I've, what I'm saying now is spiritual. I'm going to tell you the physical aspect of transformation. The Bible says his appearance changed. How do I know? His dressing style changed completely. He used to look like a terrorist. <laughs> Paul used to look like a terrorist. When, do, do you know when God told Anania, are you with me? That go and pray for Saul. What did he say? He said, eh? That guy, <laughs> we know him all. He's a terrorist. He's after us. <laughs> but after that encounter, when his eyes was open, his appearance changes. Changes completely. They used to call him, <laughs> maybe they used to call you King of the Boys. Different nicknames, you know. That glorifies the devil. But now, change that name to a new name. Change your dressing style. When they look at you physically, would they be able to say you are a true child of God, you are a worldly person? 
talk to me the bible there is a saying the way you dress is the way you will be addressed your lifestyle nature change not just spiritually but physically physically as a child of god that is transformed how is your dressing style your hair style man that you want to look like a rastafarian and you think is oh it doesn't matter no no and when there is transformation things changes you appear people will, you see let me tell you something before they say anything about you they want to look at your appearance first even before they hear your voice they hear what even if you are loaded talented gifted it doesn't matter but your appearance has said 50 60 percent of who you are even though you may be ca camouflage you know but your appearance you know some people say seeing is believing isn't it uh, you are not communicating with me <laughs> some people say that but that is not in the scripture but in the worst system we have they say i want to see before i believe so we've just talked about antichrist antichrist they are deceitful you will not be you know i, I want to pray for you when you, who can help me to do that that um, they are looking for a robber and you are innocent you are not a robber but because the way you dress they say ah it must be the one it must be the one now, listen to me. I have an encounter with a policeman. I have an encounter with a policeman. You see, the police stopped me and I stopped. And he just walked to me. And uh, I greeted him. The way he saw me dress, <laughs> he was cautious the way he was talking to me. He said, Oh, are you a pastor? I said, Yes. Even though I'm a black person, I, I did introduce myself as a pastor. He said, Are you? store i say yes so you can go the way you dress teenager listen to me don't use your hand to destroy yourself you say i want to do guy i want to be like the world there is nothing in this world if paul who used to be in the world transform himself and come to christ don't you know that is the best place to be don't you know that is the best place to be a whole soul, very educated, very learned. He has everything going well for him. He has influence, he has authority, he has power. And yet he left all those things and came to Christ. And we are asking you come to Christ. Then, uh, those are whole fashion. I need to enjoy myself. I have my life to live. You don't have your life to live. A change is coming. From today, when I see you, when they see you, they say, hey, even the disciples, when they saw them in Antichrist for the first time, they don't need to introduce them. They say, they say ah, these are Christian, Christ-like, by the way they look, by the way they dress, by the what they wear. Oh, oh, I, I've forgotten. I would have shown you my old pictures with my wife. Amen. Shout out later. It wasn't my wife then. We are very young. And one of my friends, my old classmate, I didn't know where he got that that picture from. And he sent it to me. And I said, We and somebody said, ah, ah, this is your SU. You don't tell oh. you don't tell where you the be SU. You see, just innocent, serving God. Serving God. A change in appearance is an evidence of true transformation. Number, number what? Number eight. Now, his name change. Let somebody say his name change from Saul to Paul. Do we agree with that? <laughs> the moment he became born again. He was transformed. He said, I need to change this name. I need to do what? I'm no longer the king of Antichrist again. I'm a child of God. He, I mean, you, you, how many of you agree that he changed his name? His name was changed. From Saul to Paul. His name in the community, in the society changed. They used to call him different names, but he changed his name. Change. Number five, number ten. 
Number nine, right? What he now lived for changed. He used to live for Satan, but now he lived for Christ. Let somebody read for me. Galatians chapter 13, verse 14. He said, you have heard of my career and of my former life. Put it on slide for me, please. Galatians 1, 13 and 14. He said, you have heard of my former life. Of my former lifestyles in Judaism. How I used to hunt down and persecute the church of God extensively and with fanatical zeal. I try my best to destroy it. Can you see? I try my best to do what? To destroy it. That was what he was living for. Living to destroy Christian, to wipe away Christian. But look at Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. What he lives for changes completely. Galatians 2.20. He said, I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I. But Christ liveth in me. Who is living in you? <laughs> he said, the life which I now live in the flesh. I live by faith of the sons of God who loved me and gave himself. Let somebody shout a big hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is transformation. What are you still living for now? What are you living for? Wake up in the morning, go to bed, and sleep and look for money wake up in the morning go to bed and look for money no you must live for Christ you must live for Christ your whole life must live for Christ that is where your destiny lies give it to me second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 15 second Corinthians 5 15 he said I die for everyone so that those who receive his new life we no longer live for themselves. Let somebody say for themselves. Is there now? Let's read it together, everybody now. And that he died for. That they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Who are you living for? Christ in me, the hope of glory. I want to challenge somebody here today. Live a purposeful life. Live for Christ. In the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. Let it be all about Christ. Paul said, all those things that we are gained for me, I have counted as laws that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering be made conformable unto death. I press forward towards the mark of the high calling. It's not that I have attained, but one thing I do, forgetting the things behind me and reaching forward every day. I live for Christ. Live for him, my brethren. Live for him, my child. My brethren, live for Christ. That is the hope of your glory. You want to succeed and excel in life live for Christ don't live for modern things don't pursue modern things pursue Christ and you will get all for the Bible says seek a first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing shall be added you need influence it will be added you need popularities it will be added you need wealth it will be added you need expansion it, talk about it it will come you don't i was looking at a man of god he was giving us an analogy amen daddy please come mommy please come daddy please come mommy come 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 yes come i want to show you something come this way you stay you stay mommy you come now what is in your hand whatever is in your hand raise it up raise it up come just pick something This is an evidence. This is just a symbol. We call this one money. We call this one position. We call this one um, prosperity. We call this one um, breakthrough or glory. Honor. Whatever. These are the things. Imagine how long will it take me to look for this? Look for this. 
Look for this. Look for this. It will take me ages, right? Isn't it? But I, I want you to do something for me. As I move forward, now listen. As you grow in Christ and you release yourself to Christ, you grow, you grow, as 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 you grow all these things naturally without you looking for them, they are you can go back and sit down as you grow in Christ all these things others are looking they naturally comes to you naturally you don't sweat for it you don't struggle for it I'm a living example you don't struggle for it they come on their own they even come begging you ah, I wake up early in the morning pastor I couldn't sleep God asked me to give you this jeep another person come oh daddy very early night I could not sleep God asked me to give you this house I mean I don't know and at the time you just say God wait till now wait till I won't do with party cars wait till I won't do with mighty house and you two will become a distribution center those things you don't labor for seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness stop chasing shadow you will grow white hair and yet you won't get it rise to your feet Jesus, Jesus, oh yes, I am for Jesus, Jesus, uh, hallelujah, I am for Jesus, uh, I am no more for Satan. Let every eyes be close. Are you transformed? Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. Therefore, if anyone be in Christ, is a new creature. If anyone be in Christ, physically, spiritually, mentally, materially, is a new creature. If anyone be in Christ, he can be young, he can be adult, he can be young, he can be old. All things are passed away. Amplified version says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ that is grafted in, joined to him by faith in him as Savior, is a new creature reborn, renewed by the Holy Spirit. The whole things, the previous moral, spiritual condition hey. has passed away. Hey. Behold, new thing has come. Hey. Because spiritual awakening brings a new life. Close your eyes. What has changed in your life? since you become born again what has changed in your life what has changed if nothing has changed you are not yet born again close your eyes you want to surrender your life to Jesus do you know when Paul became born again do you know his testimony changed that is the last thing his testimony changed Galatians 1.23 he said all they knew was that people were saying it's not you that will be telling them. People, we are saying, this one, this one, who used to persecute us, is now preaching the very faith he tried to destroy. Oh. This one, who used to persecute us, is now <laughs> the one <laughs> preaching the faith. His testimony change. After today, your testimony will change. Amen. They will say, that boy that used to be very stubborn, mm. ah, very humble now. Hallelujah. That boy that used to be do a rust of three young yeah. Look at him. Looking so good now. Hallelujah. That sister that used to point after one boy or one girl or pointing about ladies. I mean men here and there. Look at him now. He has changed completely. Look at that guy that used to come late. Now he's the first to come to church. A transformed life. Testimony change. Testimony. I see your testimony changing from today. Amen. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I surrender all to you, Lord. Surrender, Lord. None of me, all of you. All of you. Lord. Close your eyes wherever you are. You want to say, Lord, I'm not going to struggle with you anymore. My mind is limited. My heart is limited. But I'm surrendering all to you. All to you. All to you. Lift up your hands. I'm going to pray with you. You want I to genuinely you. give your life to Christ. Uh -huh. You want to genuinely, like Paul, a transformed heart, a renewed.
revealed eyes and a definite encounter that can never be taken away from you. Thank you. Father, say Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Change me. Change me. Change me. Change me. And transform me in outward. Open your mouth and pray. Lord, change me. Change me. And transform me. I don't want to remain the same again. I need a new testimony about my life. I need a new testimony about my association. I need a new testimony about my lifestyle. I need a new testimony about my language. I need a new testimony, Lord. Like Paul, a total transformation. A total transformation. Open your mouth and cry to God. A total transformation. A total Yakota Labra Makazike Telikataya. Iko Palagadalia. Lord, absolute transformation in my life. Let there be a total transformation in our life. Daddy, we thank you. We give